Hello, and congratulations to all the inductees today. I remember when Debbie Rebell, now Debbie Rebell Moss, was a little eighth grader. It was my first year at Dwight Englewood. She had started in seventh grade, but I was still in college then. She was a skinny little kid with her curly hair and a ponytail. She played middle school tennis, because back then we didn't have middle school girls soccer. Even though tennis wasn't her first or her second sport, she did win quite a few matches. In the spring, she was a tough cookie with Miss Carson on the middle school lacrosse team. Miss Carson remembers her exemplary athleticism, especially her speed and stick skills. She also recalls that Debbie was a very determined athlete and a quick learner. Nothing seemed to get in her way. She had guts and personified what it meant to be a tough cookie. Ms. Carson thinks Debbie may have coached her more than she coached Debbie. On the athletic field, Debbie was super fast and loved to score. I could not wait for Debbie to be in the upper school so I could coach her in varsity lacrosse. But first, I had to wait for the fall season to be over. In the fall of her ninth grade year, Debbie was finally able to share her amazing soccer skills with Dwight Englewood. She was one of the first superstars in the Dwight Englewood Varsity Girls Soccer Program. The varsity team, the, 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 um, the first, first varsity team was 1985, so Debbie's ninth grade year was the program's second. In soccer, she was a four-year varsity letter winner, first team All-State her junior and senior years, leading scorer for the program, and top scorer in the state for private schools. Finally, the spring and lacrosse had arrived. I was excited for the season because Debbie's class was filled with talented athletes. Debbie, today, Debbie is joining a few of her teammates who have already been inducted to the Athletic Hall of Fame. Among a group of highly talented lacrosse players, Debbie stood out for her scorer's mentality. Let me remind you of this time in, with girls in sports 25 to 30 years ago. Just pri five years prior to Debbie's freshman year at Dwight Englewood, the NCAA had just become a co-ed organization, making them the governing body for women's collegiate sports. DE had just completed its second year of varsity girls soccer. The idea of girls being strong, aggressive, and competitive was new to a lot of people. However, Debbie was not afraid to be aggressive. She loved to compete. She loved to win. She had a nose for the goal and loved to score. I can still picture her sprinting down Graham Field and shooting her super hard shot. Let's face it, to win you have to outscore the other team. With Debbie on the field, we're pretty much guaranteed to do this. Debbie was one of the key players in the 1989 and 1990 state championship teams. She earned honorable mention All-American in 1989, first team All-State in 1989 and 90. She was a four-year varsity letter winner in lacrosse as well as her soccer. After graduating from DE, Debbie went to the University of Pennsylvania, a Rebel family tradition. As a Quaker, Debbie earned three varsity letters in the lacrosse program. She then earned her MBA from Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. I'm sure that Debbie's focus and drive and the high level of expectations she set for herself that she demonstrated throughout her DE career on the athletic field and in the classrooms have helped her excel in the business world today. Debbie is currently a CrossFit fanatic, a wife to her husband, Jason, a working mom and volunteer coach to her daughter, Sienna, and her son, Asher, who are here with us today. I'd also be remiss if I did not mention Arthur Rebell, Debbie's dad, who's here today and was so instrumental in supporting, encouraging, and developing Debbie's athletic career. I remember many conversations with him about Debbie and sports. It's good to see Debbie's sister, and DE alum Barbara Kaufman, and to meet her stepmom Susan. It's nice to see the family and meet the new members. Please join me in congratulating an exemplary student athlete from DE class of 1990, Debbie Rebell. information day after day. <laughs> um, when I first learned of this award and shared the news with my husband Jason, his immediate response was, that's cool. 
I didn't realize you were that good in high school. Because <laughs> when I met my husband in 2000, the year 2000, we were studying for our MBA degrees at Kellogg, and my formal sports career had ended. The person he met then, while active and involved in overall fitness, was really prioritizing other things. I turned to him and I said, yeah, well, apparently they thought I was pretty good <laughs> and I'm getting this award. And by the way, so much of what framed who I am and who you love and how I've tried to live my life has been from what I learned on the athletic fields at Dwight Englewood. For me, what I learned can really be summed up in one word, and that one word is grit. In the spring of ninth grade, I had been newly promoted to the varsity squad of lacrosse, and we were set to play in the state championship game against our big rivals, PBS. I hadn't gotten a whole lot of playing time on varsity up until that point, and was really happy to be coming along for the ride to the big game. Much to my surprise, right before the game, the coach decided, because of my speed, I was going to play, and my sole role was to follow their fastest player, and just make sure she didn't get the ball. <laughs> I was terrified and a little bit intimidated at that point, and uh, we lost the game and their fastest player actually scored a few goals. I left the field that day and for the season, you know, I was, I was disappointed and I was a little embarrassed. Um, what was gonna happen next? And how would this failure impact me next season, my sophomore year? The start of the next season, Liz Trapp took over as head coach of the varsity lacrosse program. Immediately, she instilled a work ethic and a will to compete that I had never experienced before. We were a young team with many, many strong coachable athletes. She talked about fighting for every ball, practicing hard every day, and commitment. I don't recall she actually used the word grit, but that, of course, was what she was describing. Over the course of the next three seasons, we won a lot of games, including several state championships. And because, um, luckily, me and several of my teammates became those fast players to stop on the other side of the field. I didn't play lacrosse and soccer because I wanted to learn about grit. I played because I love those sports. I love competing and winning, and I love the camaraderie I felt as being part of a team of like-minded people. Those are all great reasons to play. But 25 years later, what I love is that at that critical and transformative time in my life, I learned to appreciate and internalize the importance of grit. That's a learning that profoundly shaped me and has steered me well personally and professionally ever since. I do have a few people I'd like to thank as well. First of all, all the coaches that I had at school, from middle school tennis and lacrosse to high school soccer and lacrosse. Here tonight is Betsy Carson, my seventh and eighth grade lacrosse coach. Um, Betsy, you introduced me to and helped me fall in love with a sport that became an integral part of my teenage years, and for that I'm so thankful. Um, and so does Joe. I cannot even express how great it was to see you and spend time with you in February. I am proud to not only have called you my coach, but now to really call you my friend. <laughs> to uh, my teammates and all the other student athletes here tonight, it is somewhat of a self-selecting group that gets out there and fights hard to compete, and I'm honored to be here with all of you tonight. For the girls that I played with directly, I thank you for creating, jointly creating memories and lessons for our lifetime. My children, Asher, almost age nine, and Sienna, almost age seven, I take so much pride in watching you both grow up and find things that you love to do. I hope that seeing your mom up here accepting this honor will give you the courage to follow your passion with intensity and drive. Uh, to my husband, Jason, may I always continue to keep you on your toes and learning new things about me. <laughs> and I thank you for being the best life teammate I could ask for. Um, and lastly, um, to my dad, who's over there. Can you stand up for one second? <laughs> I dedicate this to you. Uh, you always believed in me. Uh, that while I would be a great student athlete, sports was where I really could gain my grit. You supported my passion and commitment to sports when others may have felt I needed another hour in the library. <laughs> but I didn't. I needed the other hour on the field. And I thank you for that. Um, and lastly, also, my sister is here with my nephew and my brother-in-law, and I thank you for coming. 
Um, I thank everyone, and I realize it is now between me and dinner. <laughs> so thanks again for everyone, and enjoy.